Hello, hello, hello. In this video, I'm going to show you how I create 2D diagrams, or in this case, I'm gonna make only one uh, diagram from a 3D model, right? Um, architectural model, that's important to note. So it's going to be an architectural diagram. Um, this model that you see here is going to be our test subject, and it's uh, basically the same model as we've done during our live streams. By the way, if you, have, if you haven't seen that, check out links in the video description. Um, that's uh, Those are going to show you the whole process of me creating this. Nothing fancy, this is a sub D based geometry and yeah, quite, a, quite, quite a pretty straightforward building. Right, so, so diagrams. And just as a general note, my approach to diagram making is maybe not the same as everyone else's, or maybe it is, I have no idea, but just try to pick up some things that you might find useful. Right, and then maybe they'll help you out in the long run. So the first thing that I want to do uh, when creating the diagram is figure out what exactly am I going to show in the diagram, right? And um, from which angle and so on. So in this case, I want to show um, a section, a sectional diagram of, of, of this building. And I kind of want to cut it maybe across here, right? Where you see my mouse, maybe something like this, right? So I'm going to do that. Um, and it is going to be an axonometric diagram, right? So I will be creating the, the camera first, right? I will be de determining the, the, the view first. So here under perspective, where I see this little arrow po pointing downwards, I'll expand this. I'll go to set view. I'll go to iso isometric and I'll choose whichever one I want. Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, South, it really doesn't matter because we will be rotating it either way. I'll just choose Northeast because it's the first one. Right? So then uh, this is right now changed to, um, um, what, what is it called? Isometric view or axonometric view, um, meaning that all lines that are parallel are parallel in this view, right? It becomes a little bit more funky, but that's, that's what we want. All right, so that's our first step. Uh, once we found, and I'm just rotating to find the correct angle, let's see, let's just go for this one, I guess. So this is my angle that I want, right? Once I found the angle, I will maybe slightly zoom out and I will save this particular camera. And I can do that by typing in name the view, enter. Already have one view here, but I'll save another one. I'll click on save as and I'll name my view. So I'll just say diagram one or whatever, something like that. And that's it. We have it now. So that's step number one, right? Creating the view. Step number two. Oh, by the way, now if I kind of mess it up, right? If I rotate out of it and kind of work around, uh, I can type in named view again, double click on that icon of diagram one, and I'm right back where, where I was. So I'm not losing that particular angle. Um, so now what we're going to do is we will try to make 2D this particular geometry. And it's going to be a little bit funky because, um, how do I explain this? So it, it doesn't have a lot of sharp corners. And since it doesn't have a lot of sharp corners, it's going to be weird. It's going to work in a weird way. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, first of all, let me hide the landscape. It's really in the way. Um, and let me explain it by creating a box here. Like that. And I'll maybe just kind of copy the box a bit, you know, j just to add some more visual complexity. Something like that. Uh, maybe this goes up even more. Uh, Boolean union, all of it, right? We have a bunch of lines and everywhere where the, the surface changes its angle, we have a sharp edge, right? In this case, in case of our building, when a surface changes angle, it doesn't produce a sharp edge, right? Uh, because it's all continuous. I can even show you this better with an e-map. See, 
the geometry is continuous, which becomes quite awkward and quite hard to actually show it properly. Enough talking, let me show you. If I make 2D this, and I'll just use whatever, uh, whatever settings here, it doesn't matter. If I just make 2D this and hit OK, right? And look at it in the top view. This is what I get, right? A pretty nice make 2D, right? Especially if I hide the hidden lines, right? Pretty damn clean. Because all of the um, edges are, or all of the corners are sharp. If I make 2D this sub D geometry, just give it some time. It's going to take a bit. Come on. There we go. You can see that I basically have nothing here. Right? There, there's literally, it's just an outline. And the reason for that is because uh, you can think of it this way. R Rhino cannot catch those corners, right? That, that's how, at least how I would think about it. Rhino can't catch where that edge is. Thus, it just decides not to show it. So let me just delete uh, that, that main layer. Uh, delete the boxes and let's think about how to solve that. Well, for me, personally, the way I solve it is the same way as we solve landscape uh, representation, right? With landscape, it's also smooth. There is no clear um, changes in the angles of the landscape. And we still manage to show them in drawings, right? And we manage to show them in drawings through isocurves or through contours of the landscape. So I'm going to do it exactly the same way. I'm going to take my building and treat it like it's um, this kind of three-dimensional landscape, and I'm going to contour it, right? So let me just create one more layer and call it contours. Contours. And I'll just make that layer blue so that you can see better, or maybe, maybe green, something like that. I'll make it my active layer. I'll select my sub D geometry and I'll type in contour. Contour. So now it's going to ask me for base point and basically the direction. It, it wants me to give it a direction at which it's going to start slicing up my geometry. Right? So I can slice it up horizontally, I can slice it up vertically, you know, whichever direction I want. I will probably do this in the top view. I'll decide this in the top view. I'll just go for maybe contouring it from here towards here. I'm holding down the shift key to snap to 90 degree angles. So from here, from uh, north to south, like that. And now it's asking me for distance between contours. This is basically what's the step size, right? So I'm going to choose, this is 500. So that's like 50 centimeters, half a meter. That's a little bit too much. Um, I'll probably choose like every 20 centimeters, I want a contour. So 200 mil, 200, enter. And now I'm just giving it some time. You can see the contours appearing, right? Let's just give it some, some time to, to work. Yeah, it, it, takes, <laughs> it takes a little bit. A little bit. Okay. So, the geometry that we are getting right now, and by the way, now it's done, but uh, while, while I still have all of these selected, I'll type in group. I'll group them up just so that it's easy to, for, for me to work with this. Right? So now I have all of these contours. And if I select the contours and the building, so holding down the shift key, uh, both of them at the same time, and I make 2D, and this time around, I'm going to disable hidden lines because I don't really don't need them. So disable hidden lines, and I'll just call it QQQ, whatever. Um, and just hit OK. First of all, it's going to take a little bit of time because that's a lot of contours. 
Um, but once it's done, it's going to produce uh, a little bit more convincing shape, but it's still going to be, well, for the lack of a better word, dirty. It's going to have a few issues. And like the colors are, why did I choose green? Oh, uh, wait, let's, let's choose a different color. Magenta, but dark magenta. Like that, and this should be by color, by layer. Are you good? Yeah, you're good. Okay, so here you can see that it's it's better, definitely better, but it's now it's making some mistakes, right, in terms of representation. So those mistakes can be fixed. Um, to, to a certain extent, uh, they can be fixed to a certain extent. Some of them, some of these mistakes are made because the curves and the geometry are intersecting. They're literally on the same, um, how do I call it? They're in the same position, right? They're overlapping. And since I'll just delete it, uh, since they are overlapping, right? They're right here, for instance, it's not showing it properly, right? It's, it needs to decide, Rhino needs to decide which one to show. Uh, so a way of how to fix it would be to offset the curves outwards, right? Uh, but I'm not going to be doing that because I think um, that is going to create more problems that, in, that it's going to solve. Instead, I'll be cleaning it up in 2D. And I know, you know, you, you kind of will need to spend 15, 20 minutes cleaning it up, but you just do it once and you're, you're, you're kind of done with it. So who cares? Okay, so let's, let's do this. One more thing is, remember when I said that I want a clipping plane type of a diagram, um, like a diagram that's, that's a slice? We will do that right now, actually. So I'm going to take this, um, this view and I'll create a clipping plane. I'll just draw out the clipping plane right here, rotate it properly, and just push it in to an angle where I want it to be. Probably something like this, right? So I have a clipping plane doing its thing right here. Great. If I select the clipping plane and type in flip, it's going to show me the other side of the building, right? So I can kind of flip between, uh, back and forth. Okay, so we have our clipping plane. I'll just create a separate layer for it real quick. Let me delete that QQQ. New layer, clipping plane. Like that. And just change object layer. There we go. Now it's there. Now we have this working. I guess it's time to just make 2D, right? Just make 2D. So we show, now I kind of want to see the landscape. And for the landscape, um, let, let's decide what kind of aesthetic do we want for the landscape? Because I really don't want it just to be a plane. So for now, let me just uh, select the clipping plane, turn it off. Let's think about the landscape for just a second. Maybe I want it to be contoured, but I want it to be contoured in, a, in an opposite direction. Maybe that's gonna, yeah, I think that's gonna look pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to, while I still have the, the landscape on, um, I'm going to select it. I'm going to create a new layer, by the way, and just call it uh, landscape contours. There we go. Make them, uh, this time I will make them green. Just like that, make them active, go to the top view, and just, so if we are contouring uh, from top to bottom in the top view, the building, the landscape will be contoured from left to right, right? So I'm going to contour from left to right, and I'll choose, uh, let's say every meter, so every thousand millimeters, we just contour the landscape. There we go, that's done. That was easy. We have our landscape contours here working. I'll group them up as per usual. 
I'll probably even hide the, the landscape itself. I don't really need the landscape. I just want the contours. They look fine. They look nice. Uh, what the hell? Why is this one? One contour is just disconnected. I don't know what's up with that. We will fix that later in 2D. Just some sort of a visual bug. Time to make 2D. Time to make 2D. Okay. So select the clipping plane, turn it on for this particular view. Uh, select your geometry, go to named view and choose your, you know, the, the view that you locked in. Uh, one important thing is make sure that you have also selected your windows and whatnot, you know, everything in, in your scene. So control A and with control, I will unselect the clipping plane. And then we make 2D. Wait. Wait. Ah. Clipping plane. Turn it on for this view as well. For diagram one. There we go. Now, control A, unselect the clipping plane, make 2D. Enter. Um, and let's just work around with the uh, settings a bit. So for layer name, I'll just say section one um and now let's see what we can change here so we are indeed creating a make 2d from the view we are our object properties come from uh, by output layers because we want to control them through layers tangent edges we don't really need those uh, hidden lines we don't really need those Scene silhouette is kind of nice. It's going to give us a pretty cool silhouette. We need that. Clipping plane intersections definitely need that. That is going to give us the outline for where the clipping plane cuts through the building. That's going to be excellent for hatching. Uh, viewport rectangle really don't need that. Group output. Sure, why not? We can ungroup it later if we need to. Register with previous. I have no idea what that one does, so we just ignore it. I hit OK and we wait a little bit. And by a little bit, I mean probably around 20 seconds. Never mind, it's almost done. <laughs> Actually, taking. Uh, never mind, it, it is going to be around, yeah, 16 seconds. Okay, so we have now successfully done a first portion of, 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 of the. Mm, the diagram, right? Uh, at least the raw output of the first por portion of the diagram. Okay. Now I am going to select the clipping plane, flip, flip it around, select everything again, and select uh, the, the clipping plane. Uh, make 2D again. Since I haven't rotated the camera, it's fine if it's zoomed out. As long as I don't rotate it, as long as the angle is correct, that's that's fine. So I just make 2D. Um, I'll just call it section 2, maybe. Do I need to? Maybe I don't. I don't know. No, let's do section 1. Let's, let's uh, bake it out into the same um, like uh, layer hierarchy. I'll just hit OK. And we wait 16 more seconds. Did you know that your arrow keys, uh, when you press uh, your arrow keys on your keyboard, you can fast forward five seconds or go back five seconds on YouTube? Interesting, huh? Either way. In top view, I'll bring it back. And what the hell is this? And this? Something funky is going on there. No idea what this one is. So I'm just going to delete it. Ignore it. Uh, but we do have ourselves. Uh, maybe that's too close. Uh, we do have ourselves uh, two portions of the same building in 2D. Right. So now I don't need the clipping plane anymore. Actually, I'll just select it and I'll turn it off for all of the views. I'll just have it there. Just, you know, maybe, maybe I'll need it. Um, some some 
in, in some time. Okay, let's see. Let's see what we have here. We have a bunch of contour lines. That's fine. We will work with them. Uh, some of them need a lot of fixing, others don't. Uh, we will need to fix quite a bit with these windows. Um, some hatching will need to happen and uh, some some joining of, of contour, contour lines will need to happen. So first things first, joining of contour lines. That is super simple, but very kind of, let's call it meditative, right? It's going to take a little bit of time. The way we join uh, two disconnected contour lines together is through blend. Blend CRV, blend curves. Select the first one, select the second one. Um, choose to join and you want to blend through curvature. Hit OK. And they get blended together right, into one big happy curve. And you kind of just repeat it over and over. In some cases, it, you will have no idea where to blend in your curve. So then you either leave it uh, as it is, or you just kind of draw by hand. Um, in this case, I'm just going to leave it there. I'm going to just blend uh, the, the, the curves that I really see create kind of awkward gaps. That with that. I know that that's not the correct one, but who cares? Um, like that. So whole, this this whole part is is super problematic, right? We don't have a lot of stuff going on here, um, so I will need to kind of think about how to solve that um, without using the blend. But uh, that's gonna be later. For now, I'm just going to kind of go through all of these curves and. Clean everything up as much as I can with Blend. So let me pause the video here and we'll continue once I'm done. Okay, so this portion took like 20 minutes to do and it wasn't that bad. Um, while I was doing it, I kind of had a chance to take a look at all of the geometry that we have, like all of this 2D geometry that we have, and I saw a few things that I really want to fix. The first one is if I turn off the curves, or rather not the curves, sorry, if I just select like the awkward part, for instance, here, I can see that it belongs to a group that is disconnected from, um, from the contours, right? And I believe here we also had like the same issue like that. So what I'm going to do is I will probably isolate these. I'll use isolate on these. And I will un, uh, ungroup and just delete the unnecessary bits here and there, right? Uh, and and um, right now it's only these that I don't want to have. Ungroup that, uh, delete all of this, group up this. Uh, don't forget to group it up after you're done. And then unisolate. Unisolate. Now this is a little bit cleaner, a little bit nicer. And I can still see that blend CRV from here to here, that there is a little bit more blending left to do. But it's nothing, you know, uh, it, it's already almost done. Okay, so. There's still a lot of cleaning up that's, uh, that is indeed left to do um, and that I can't do with just blending. For instance, this portion right here, this is like the uh, a, a little bit more difficult ones, one of the more difficult ones, uh, where I will indeed need to draw that. I will need to draw my lines, right? So the way I'm going to do it is probably by uh, let's try let's try doing it this way. If I have a curve here and let me ungroup, right? If I have this curve here that is full, you know, it's 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 kind of a clean curve, and I have an almost full curve here. 
let me ungroup that as well and join these two up the question is could i delete everything in between them and tween tween these two curves together enter oops tween between this and this curve and flip them so that they're correct and then just choose the correct number of sections that i want i think it's like eight maybe nine right and in doing so i can kind of fill in the, the the missing gaps as you can see enter that and we have our new batch of curves i'll do it for some of these where i can really see that tween uh, will work nicely for instance here let me ungroup tween curves a uh, number in this case only one and i have a curve there and let's do it again here tween curves between this and this one and again between this and this okay so this portion is kind of fixed well except <laughs> the more you look the more you find right um tween curves or or rather sorry or maybe it's gonna work let's try tween curves between this and this yeah it does work but we need two there and this and this number two enter there we go so that kind of works works nicely then there is um curves which can can't be tweened for instance this segment right here for that particular segment i would probably draw something by eye something like this and then would use blend curves between here and here we just blend blend it in right so you don't really want um you don't need to be super accurate you just want those parts not to catch any attention right blend curves from here to here good enough from here to here good enough so you just want those parts not to catch any attention between these curves together like that okay let me choose select the landscape contours and unselect all of those and change the layer to curves so that everything has the kind of correct line um I, what what the hell are you okay let me isolate ungroup delete select group and isolate that's literally the like the cleaning up pro process right so i've showed you how to clean up that part and of course there's a, li a little bit of drawing that we will need to do here right but i believe you kind of already see that that needs a few more lines right that line there a line there a line there i know for a fact that if a line segment is here it will need to be the same length here and as well as here right um then let's do some verticals like that use this to trim bam copy and just copy here here so it's a lot of kind of adding information that we've lost right i don't i don't really know why rhino does these mistakes no idea but it's not that bad like adding them back it's not that bad um trim okay so we have this almost done like the this basic cleaning up process um one more thing that i want to show before we move on uh, is these parts here you can always uh, like if something is quite calm in terms of curvature you can always select the a curve and you can extend to it to it so i can extend this guy to here and this guy to here but you can see that it 
it is indeed messing up. So that won't work. But if something is a little bit closer, for instance here, I believe I can just extend like that. These don't uh, shouldn't meet, by the way. Don't don't worry that they're not meeting. It's because this is like a, a railing, right? Okay, so we just extend that part, and that 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 seems to work just well. And for the parts that don't work, we will just draw a few a few segments to kind of describe the curvature that we want. Something like that, something like that. Yeah, something like that. That's good enough. Blend curve. Bam, bam. Okay. Okay. Oops. My mistake. From there to there. That's it, right? Oh, yeah, and this one moves to curves uh, layer. Okay. So that is how we, we work with this. I would do the, exactly the same thing here. Um, actually, for this one, I would probably use interpolate uh, uh, curve interpolate through points uh, tool, and I would just kind of connect all of these points up, right, to get that frame uh, active, or, or to get that frame in place, like that, that. And then it kind of ends somewhere here, probably. And extends to this. Okay, I will stop. Uh, I will stop here because we don't want to just kind of be cleaning up for two hours, right? We want to actually make some graphics happen. Um, but by no means would I call this clean, right? I would spend at least half half an hour more cleaning this whole thing up. Right. Oh yeah, remember that landscape contour? This one? Same thing, blend curves. Blend between this curve and this, this curve. Enter, we have our landscape contour. And then we just select this curve right here and this one right here. And we trim away the segment in between. That's it, now it's cleaned up. All right, hatching. Time, time to do some, a little bit of hatching. So here uh, in the layers, uh, under layers, we have scene silhouette curves, curves, and clipping plane intersections. We have three layers, right? Uh, so up until now, we were working with the curves layer, right? And if I hide it, you can see that it takes up most of the, of the geometry is placed in the curves layer. So the question is, what is placed in other two, right? If I hide the curves layer and I hide the clipping plane intersections layer, I can see that scene silhouette curves is actually dog shit. <laughs> it actually, actually does nothing. Well, maybe, maybe someday, maybe someday the uh, silhouette will be, we will get a silhouette out of uh, curvilinear geometry. Today is not that day, though. So I'm just going to delete that layer because I don't want it to be in the way. Let's just see if us deleting that layer messed anything up. Doesn't seem like it did. Seems everything is fine. So we are kind of working with the curves layer and clipping plane intersections layer. Yeah, whatever. So now if I turn on clipping plane intersections layer, I can see that there are indeed curves here which I have no idea what they represent. Ah, okay. So they are basically curves which you get when uh, cut, when clipping plane cuts through geometry, right? That's the actual cut lines. So in this case, we don't really need those curves here. So I'm just going to change them to uh, the curves layer. Right, and so everything here is in one single layer for now. But here, by the way, what the hell are you? Isolate, ungroup, delete. 
Delete that as well, maybe. Maybe. Yes. Show. Or unisolate. I uh, sorry, sorry. Um group and then unisolate. Yeah, that, that looks a little bit better. We can even blend it a little bit more. Sorry, force of habit. Anyway, um, now we are going to work with clipping plane intersection. So if I select this, uh, all of these curves, I can see that uh, they are indeed closed curves, right? And I can use them to hatch, right? So I'll create one more layer and call it hatch, right? And for this hatch layer, um, I'm, I'm just going to choose a color that is, I don't know, red, maybe? Let's go for red. Something that is that we will definitely see. So that's our hatch layer. I will type in, I'll make it my active layer, by the way, and I'll type in hatch, enter. It will ask me to select curves or select, and is it, are these curves boundary based or not? So I'll say boundary, yes. And I'll just select my curves. I'll select all of them, hit enter. It's going to take a while. Well, a little, a little bit of time. Now it's done and it's asking me to click inside of the regions which I want to hatch, right? So I'm going to click here, bam, that's done. For some reason it's lagging, but that's fine. I want to click here. It's a little bit slow. Click there. And basically I'm just choosing all of the parts which are going to be cut. I can see that. <laughs> Here I have a weird connection, but that's fine. A weird intersection, I mean. Like that. And then we click on the root portion. Like that. Inside there. I don't know why it's so slow, though. And yeah, we don't really care, though, though. Okay, we select that. And one last part is right, or rather two parts, I guess. It's right there, uh, right here. Like that, and like that. Okay, hit enter. It shows you how the hatch is going to look like. In this case, I am indeed using the solid hatch. Um, but you can choose any kind of pattern you want, right, from here. But I want a solid, so I'll just hit OK. And it creates a hatch for me, a red one. Oh, I, I forgot to hatch this one, so hatch, click, come on, enter. Hello? Why don't you hatch properly? Isolate, select. This is be being weird. Sometimes hatch, by the way, is acting strange so then I what I like to do is I like to redraw that outline and hatch the the outline itself and then it works just fine I don't know why um, but hatch seems to be unstable in Rhino 7 maybe something uh, it's something to do with sub D either way uh, we have our hatch done now I will type in show to or an isolate I haven't isolated anything. What am I doing? I'll just turn on the curves, right? And I can see my section being shown here. So now, now it's time to decide on the graphics, right? I will probably, my graphics are probably going to be like twofold, right? So uh, this part will be like the main, uh, not geometry, but the main graphic. <clears throat> and this is going to be like a ghost that is added to my main graphic. So my ghost is going to be, um, it's going to have like a separate layer, right? And it's going to have like separate thicknesses and, and whatnot. So I'm just going to create a new layer and I'll call this, um, I'll just call it ghost, I don't know, ghost. And I'll change all of these, all of this part of the section to that particular layer. I'll make it uh, probably like grayish, like that, for now. 
uh, later will we'll make it even nicer. Okay, so we have this then. Now, um, I do want to select this whole thing and kind of move it to like snap, snap it in place to the correct uh, position. I'm just going to select this from here up from here and just copy to here. You need at least one point that matches right between your two sections. And now we have this. Right? We have our main uh, section and then we have the like the ghost as an extension. Uh, this is way too big. The landscape is way too big. So now it's time to actually frame it. And the way I like to do it is I really like creating a rectangle. And let's use our curves um, layer for this. I like creating a rectangle of a page size that I will be using. So in this case, it's going to be 420 millimeters, enter by 297 millimeters. That's an A3 sized page. I'll scale it. Uh, sorry, I'll zoom into it. And I will scale it up by some amount, right? So I'll scale it up by, let's try 50, enter. So my A3 got scaled up 50 times. That means that any geometry that is plotted out inside of this rectangle, if we treat this rectangle as A3, will be at a scale of 0.50. to But uh, as you can see, the diagram will not fit. So I'll just scale it up even further, scale it up two times more. So now everything that's inside of here is 1 to 100. Perfect. And now it fits. And now I can actually just take this um, rectangle and I will offset it inwards by one centimeter, right? but at the scale of one to a hundred. So that's going to be a hundred centimeters, which is a meter, right? So I'll offset it inwards by 1000 like that. Now I can select the inner uh, rectangle and I can use it to trim away the landscape. Just like that. Okay. Get rid of the necessary curves. And this is what we uh, what we currently have, right? Our our geometry is becoming actually, you know, nice. <laughs> the graphics are becoming act actually becoming nice. Okay, so next thing up is we want to work with thicknesses, right? And for this, I will use uh, what's called um, print display. I'll use print display. And I'll choose the state of it to be on. Right? When I change the state of it uh, to on, now it's going to give me the accurate, well, not accurate, but it is going to show me which, um, in, in which color and in which thickness the different lines are going to plot out. So for instance, if I choose that my ghost, uh, layer. Oops. My bad. Just a second. If I choose that my ghost layer plots out with a print width of 0 0.13, and I zoom in here, right, you can see that this line right here is definitely thicker than this line right here. And I can even make this even um, more apparent. If I change the curves thickness to, uh, let's do two millimeters, whatever, who cares, right? I guess this is quite, quite apparent now, right? So we can kind of investigate the thicknesses here, uh, get the sense of the thicknesses here. But what I really like using this for is the colors, right? Just seeing the colors at which I'm going to print out. So first things first, um, my curves, I want them to plot out kind of thin. So I'm going to choose 0 0.18 millimeters for the curves. But 
there's going to be different curves for different things, right? So this outline, for instance, I want that this particular outline to be a little bit thicker. Or uh, let's think of it other way around. I want the contour lines to be a little bit thinner, right? So I'm going to select my contour lines. Should have grouped them, but live and learn, I guess. Let me turn off the ghost layer for now. Don't need it. That, that one. All of these ones. That one. That one. That. I'm just selecting the contours. That, forgot that one. Mm -hmm. And basically, I'm just going to um, make them much thinner than the all of the rest of the lines, just so that they are not so much in the way visually. Okay. Yeah. Ah, missed a few here, 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 and that. Oh my God! That that whole part is messed up I, I would need to come back in and then clean it up if this was a real project here i'm just going to leave it okay so i have selected my contour lines here i'm just going to oh, almost all of the contour lines here i'm going to oops create a new layer and i'll just call it contours or not contours i already have contours make 2d contours there we go. Uh, make them blue. And just change object layer. There we go. Now we have them uh, in this separate make 2D contours layer, which means I can turn them off or on. And when I turn them off, I can see that I accidentally have put the outline as well into that layer. So let me just move the outline back into the curves layer. Change object layer. There we go. Some contours are still here. By the way, uh, once that is done, uh, change object layer. Once that is done, I can say that my curves layer is indeed, let's say, 0 0.25, while my make 2D contours layer is 0 0.13, right? A thin one. And its color is the same color as my ghost layer. So somewhat dark. Um, do I have like a pre custom color list? There we go. Uh, dark, dark gray, right? Dark gray here and dark gray here. There we go. Should work. Let me turn on the ghosted layer. This is what we have. Seems to be seems to be okay. So now, for the landscape, for the landscape itself, actually all of the landscape contour lines that we have here, I don't want them to change. I want them to stay kind of kind of the way they are. So I'm just going to push them back into the curves layer. There we go. Something like this. That that will. <clears throat> that will do the trick. Okay, what's next? Next up, hatch. So for hatch, all we need to do is just change the color. I'll just change it to black. That's it. We're done. Uh, well, actually, not really, because you can see that the gray lines are in front of the hatch. I don't want it to be this way. So I'm going to uh, type in cell hatch, and I'll choose to bring forward or or rather bring to front and hit enter when i do that the hatch is going to be the thing that's going to be in the in the front of my drawing and the lines are going to be behind them behind it so i i will save on some trimming quite a bit actually on trimming when doing it this way now when i think about it Maybe the make to the contours, maybe those are 
colored black. And the ghost contours are colored. They, they have some sort of a color. Let's see, lavender. Yeah, that's, that's nicer. Yeah, I think that's nicer. So we're going to stick to that. What else is there? So hatch, since we don't actually use an angled hatch, we don't care about the thickness. Flipping plane intersection thickness. So that's the thickness of... of uh, of these lines right here. Um, now we can make them a little bit thicker, one millimeter, sure, whatever. That works. And that is basically it. That is basically it. Um, I would probably, yeah, honestly, I would probably use this curve that we have here. Like, let me zoom into it. This curve to get rid of the, of these lines. Even though technically they are correct, uh, it is correct to have them there, but it looks awkward. So I'll just use it to trim away this, 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 and this. Oh, and also this, this, and this. So at this point, we are just kind of choosing, um, choosing our graphics, right? Choosing which, what, whatever works, not necessarily whatever. Oops, ungroup. Just be mindful of stuff being grouped, by the way. Uh, for instance, these two things. Ungroup. And select and select delete. There we go. Do we plot it out? I think we do. To plot it out, um, I will not be creating um, a layout. Or maybe I should. Nah, let's just do it the old fashioned way. Control P. We choose either Adobe PDF or Microsoft Print to PDF or Rhino PDF, whichever you want. <clears throat> I'll use Adobe. Size A3, super. Landscape format, super. Vector output, super. Print color, super. View and output scale, we choose window. We click on the bottom left corner. We click on the uh, top right corner. Hit enter. It might ask you a few questions, it might not. Just hit enter until it's satisfied. We scroll down here. We see our scale is cho uh, chosen to be scaled to fit. No, no, no. We want full numbers. So in model space, it's actually 1 to 100 mil. Right? 1 to 100. Everything else is whatever. We, we hit print. We save it as our whatever PDF file, wherever we want it. We wait for it to plot out. And we take a look, right? This is how it looks like. That's our little house. And if I zoom into it, I can see that, you know, the changes in thickness and in line thickness and so on. And actually, I will open up Photoshop. You thought the tutorial was over. No, it's not. Uh, we open up Photoshop and we do one last thing while photoshop is opening up in diagram uh, in our actual correct angle view uh, so let's go to oh, come on photoshop not now i know you're fast at opening but later and that's me uh, in our angled view um so i'll just go for named view diagram one there we go i'll turn on arctic display mode. I'll go to, where's my clipping plane? Shade it. Hi, there we go. I'll select my clipping plane and make it uh, clip through diagram one. And I'll flip it around so that it's clipping actually the inside here. Now I'll change this to Arctic view. I'll go to, on the right hand side, I'll go to display and I'll turn off curves. And I'll turn off clipping plane intersections. Uh, so right at the bottom, clipping plane settings, show fills, show edges. I'll turn those off as well. Actually, fills we can we can we can have fills on or off. Doesn't matter. It's being hatched either way. Just like that. And is that it? I think that's it. 
If you have like surface edges and so on, uh, turn those off as well. Uh, all we want is a completely grayscale image, right? Once I have that done, I will type in view, come on, view capture to file, right? I will choose a pretty high resolution. In my case, I use 4K, so 3840 by 2160. I'll hit OK. Um, I'll just call it whatever. Hit save. It's saved now. Now in Photoshop, we open up where is it? We open up the... Uh, I have too much. We open up the our PDF. Uh, by the way, when you're opening up a PDF in Photoshop, make sure that you have Crop 2 set to be Media Box. This will make sure that you stick to the A3 size. That's important. So we open it up. Bam, that's done. Then we create one more layer in Photoshop. We color it. I have just figured out that you don't see the layers. So sorry about that. Um, so I have just created a one additional layer in Photoshop and I'm going to fill it with a background color, right? So I'll just go to edit, fill, uh, foreground color, doesn't matter, control I, um, just white color. There's still some lines there that I would like to get rid of, but let's let's call it a day. Um, and now we're in between our lines layer and our background layer. I'll create one more layer. And in it, I'm going to place our view captured to file that we have. And where is it? There it is. Drag and drop this in. Enter. Uh, we will need a, a few adjustments here and there, right? Because the scale, even though it looks like it's gonna, it's about to fit, it's not. It's not gonna fit. So um, there's still a few adjustments that I need to do with this. So the first adjustment is I don't want this to be a smart object, so I'll right click on this and I'll choose to rasterize layer, right? So now my layer is just a normal picture. And second thing is uh, we need to adjust the, the the scale of it, right? So I'll zoom in. Oh, by the way, it, it um, the plotter, the, the the PDF creator likes uh, to give you these kind of a uh, mesh lines for the hatch, uh, both in AutoCAD and in Rhino. And I have no idea how to get rid of them. If you know, um, just write in the comments. I'll I'll make sure to somehow relay it in my other videos. Anyway, adjusting the scale. I have um, my rendered, let's call it rendered layer now selected. I'll uh, hit Control T, Command T for the Mac us users. And I will get this kind of a scaling, like the Control T is transform, right? So I'll get this kind of scaling option. Um, and the crosshair right in the middle of my image. If you don't see the crosshair, just tick mark this uh, little tick box right here in the top left corner. Uh, so that crosshair, I will move to a point where I, I will have two images kind of aligned. So I will use this point as my anchor here, and I will align my drawing with my render right at this point. So this point right here is a point around which we are going to be scaling the geometry, right? So that is taken care of. Things align here in this point. I zoom out and I'll find some sort of an opposite corner. For instance, here maybe or maybe here. No, here it's bad. That's bad. That's kind of good. Yeah, sure. Let's use this, right? We want these to align, right? So all we need to do is scale it up. So right now the, the image is too small. I need to scale it up. Let me try 105%. Almost, but not quite. 107%. A little bit too big. 106. A little bit too small. 106.5. I know this how, how this looks like. <laughs> but it is what it is, you know? 
106.6 then. A little bit too big. 5, 6. 5, 8. Good enough. 106.57. Enter. We are done. Because no one will really see that you know, things are misaligned here. So we are done with um, adding the like an, a render underneath our model here. Uh, for the render itself, I kind of want to get rid of you know a, a few things here and there, uh, and that's not going to be a problem. Uh, like it, it's going to be pretty easy to do. So the first thing that I want to kind of get rid of, oops. The first thing that I want to get rid of are these uh, hard edges where the render ends. So I will just use a eraser tool, honestly. Mode brush, super soft, really large size. You could use uh, what, whatever you want. Um, for instance, a gradient with a mask or, you know, whatever works. In my case, I'll just use a freaking eraser. There we go. No more seam here. There we go. No more seam here. Perfect. <laughs> right. Keep it, keeping it simple, I guess. And then I want to adjust the levels of it. Control L. I want the dark parts to be darker. So I'm just moving the left hand side thingy here. And I want the bright parts to be kind of glossy, so brighter. And then with the middle one, I can adjust the, the brightness of the overall um, render. So I'm going to make it pretty dark, like that. Something like this. Then I'll um, use Ctrl U to adjust the colors. I'll choose to colorize. And I will choose a color that I kind of want to use. Oh, that saturation, that's not the color. I'll choose the color first. So we're going with blue. So I guess I'll, I'll continue on with blue. That is not blue. That is blue. Oh, actually, that's a pretty nice color. Something like that. Minty. Okay. And then for opacity, I'll turn it down to like 50% of the layer opacity, just so that it's not too much. Maybe 66, actually. Something like that. Right? So now we have um, a line, a line drawing with the underlying layer. Uh, sorry, underlying uh, rendered layer. For my layer one, I will maybe create a, a copy of it and choose to multiply that cop copy just to make the lines a little bit more intense. And I could even just move those lines up by one pixel. Now let me zoom in just to show you what's going on. Right? So this is like a duplicate line, but I do want them to be um, in the same position, I just want them to be whoop, just slightly up, right? Just like that. Uh, this will just make them pop a little bit more, be a little bit more intense, and maybe maybe one of them is desaturated. Maybe both of them are. Not sure if desaturation works. Um, and now a few more decisions, a few, like a few last decisions, I guess. What's happening here? Do I want this, uh, this color grade in here? My answer to that is probably not. So I'm just going to kind of go in here like that, and that, that, and I'll just cut this whole thing away from here. Just to make that part clean and crisp. And I guess that is it. We are done. We have ourselves a little bit of a diagram. It's not cleaned up. It's still, you know, uh, qu quite a mess. I kind of like it. I don't 
like the color though. Um, one one last thing, I promise. I'll just shift the colors of the drawing itself and find something that's a bit nicer. Maybe something like that. Yeah, something like that. I think will 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 work ni more nicely. So more towards there, a little bit more intense, but a little bit darker. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, something like that. Once you're done, you just hit save and that's it. You're done. You have yourself a diagram. One hour. Huh? <laughs> well, I hope you've learned something. Sure, surely it was a... Uh, not a fast pace, but like a really clear step-by-step -step progression of what I, how I work and what I do. And of course, every diagram is completely different. And for every diagram, I need to use different tools, but the basis of it is always the same. And this is exactly what I've shown you right here. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time. Later.